welcome to a day in the studio here. Yeah, we'll just call it a day in the studio. Uh, so this is, I'm going to show how to do a stencil to create an image on a cup using vinyl stencils that are cut using a Cricut. So first thing you got to do is you have to design in <clears throat> Cricut or Silhouette or whatever design program what your image is going to be, input it into there, and then hit cut. I'm just not going to go over that. What you get is you'll get something that looks like this. You can just see the outline cut there. <clears throat> well, once you have that outline cut, you have to take a handy dandy little tool. They make all kinds of little things. It's called weeding. You want to get rid of everything that ta -da, is going to be the stencil part, right? So my color is going to go through that translucent area there. Once you have that done, that weeding can take a little bit of time, you want to go ahead and I like to use contact paper um, and you're going to make a transfer tape. Now they do sell transfer tapes, but I find that contact paper works the best for what I do because it doesn't stick as well, right? Or it sticks well enough, but still allows me to remove it easily. Now, when you put your contact paper down, you want to smooth it all the way out you want to get the white vinyl to really adhere to it. So I like to put it over the top and then I'll take a, I have one here, where did it go? Oh no, it's around here somewhere. Uh, probably. All right, I used to have one around here somewhere and uh, it is here somewhere, somewhere over the rainbow. And, um, you want to take something, an old credit card works really well, which is kind of what I was looking for, but. I apparently have misplaced it on my very messy table. But you want to rub it down and get it really, really well attached. Uh, so that when you go to remove the backing off the vinyl, that the vinyl front stays attached to the contact paper and that will give you the ability to place it where you want it to go. I'm going to trim mine up a little bit. Uh, which is nice. I'm just coming around. I'm cutting so that I can kind of get a little bit closer. I don't need so much of the vinyl hanging out there. And it'll let me see where I'm putting it a little bit better. There go. But it's going to end up looking like that. It becomes shiny and you can see through it a little bit more. Uh, then, next step is to take your cup. Now this I'm going to do, it's going to be an anaglyph, so it's actually going to look 3D um, when it's done, you wear some 3D glasses, the old blue and red ones, and it'll look really cool. But I'm going to take, and now I'm just going to pull, I'm just going to separate out my vinyl from the white backing. Uh, we'll find sometimes you might need to press a little bit more to get that transfer paper or contact paper to attach. I sometimes will go in a few different directions to get it to attach. You know, and you'll notice as you're peeling it away, if it starts to stick up there or stick and peel off, you can push it back down. I don't want to lose this hair piece. There we go. And now I have my stencil. So I just removed the white vinyl backing, or the backing on the vinyl. and It's got a sticky side and a non-sticky side. But there is my white, not my transfer. <clears throat> now, this is the part where it gets a little bit um, sticky. Now, as I said, I was going to be doing mine as a transfer on to make it an anaglyph. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset my camera here so that you can actually see and look down and I can work a little bit easier. All right, so we're gonna. So, as you can see, here is my cup I'm gonna be applying it to. I'm gonna be lining this up so that it situates. I could line it originally, it was lined up like that, and so now that I found where it was lined up at originally, I just have to move it over so that my blue lines 
are just offset from the red ones it will cover up some of those red ones but the key is to create that offset it's that offset that of the blue and the red which allows these anaglyphs to really work well and then you smooth down your stencil using my fingers there I'm going to smooth that on down there I still got a little bit where I got to do little adjustment here down here on his foot we're gonna press it down there we go and what's nice about this I use the non-permanent vinyl but what's nice about it is it, it will form fit to and this to fairly complex um, curves this is you know a has a curve going around and then it has an angle coming down that has a drop and another curve around here so once you have it on place now you just have to remove the transfer tape and you'll be ready Let's see if we get that transfer tape to pop up a little bit there we go and you'll be ready make sure everybody stays down and in place where you want it to be peel away and if you've ever applied these vinyl stickers to car windows and things of that nature it's the same process uh, but now take it and peel it back and I'll come back through and I'll use my little tool just to kind of rub it down a little bit so it sticks really well to my bisque I do this on bisqueware. Um, I have found that you can do it on greenware. I just don't like to do it on greenware. It doesn't doesn't adhere as well for me. And with the clean lines that I try to get, um, bisqueware does the best. I can really get down on there. And now, now that's applied. Bring that up a little bit. As you can see it. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to apply the underglaze. If my underglaze here, this one, I'm going to use some electric blue by uh, Amico. Uh, the electric blue works great for the technique to create the anaglyph technique. But I'm going to come through here and I'm going to take, and I'm going to apply this electric blue. And I like to use an old makeup sponge. Um, when I'm doing this, it allows me to dab it on there. And by dabbing onto it, I'm not going to be pushing anything underneath the, the vinyl. So I'll get a crisp, clean, a cleaner line. Sometimes if you're using a brush uh, and you're brushing it on there, you'll brush up to the edge. And that can actually push paint or underglaze or glaze underneath the vinyl edge there and give you a little bit of a not so crisp appearance so we're going to just keep on through in here and now this is an underglaze so it covers pretty well but i always like to at least do uh two to three coats with the underglaze so that i know i got a good coating on the piece so we're gonna let that sit for a minute while that's sitting, I'll, you know, maybe have a drink. I don't know. I'll pour a little bit more underglaze into my lid. Now, this piece has already been fired once, um, so I don't have to worry about that red coming off. But generally, if you let the underglaze dry completely before you do your next stencil, you can layer your stencils and it won't really affect it at all. You'll actually get good coverage, um, which is generally how I do it. This one, I broke the one stencil I was using, so I had to, but I needed to put them in the kiln to bisque fire, because that's some other things in there. So I put it in, bisque fired it. 
went back, cut the mech stencil. Um, what's great about those new machines and programs is that you can you can you can save them, right? You can save your your cut and just recut it at a later date. And we come through again. Ooh, I got a little excess there. Not a problem. I can wash that off afterwards because this is disc fired already. So everything that's on here is not going anywhere. And I just tap it around. And I can now let it dry. Won't take long. It's pretty porous. So it will soak up and I'll be able to pull that stencil right back off. And if it survives, I can actually end up reusing that stencil. So if I still have my my original uh, backing material, I can put it back on there. There's my original backing material. So we're going to reach over here and slowly start to peel it away and do the sexy reveal. Peeling, and as you can see, I I done broke my stencil on that one as I was peeling it back. This one because it has such some, some tiny attachment points, it has a tendency to break, and I really can only get about one use out of it. Um, but that's okay. I don't mind that. I'm go ahead, and keep peeling this old boy back, revealing. Anaglyph design. More. There we go. And so now you can see that anaglyph has been applied. And if you put on some 3D, old fashioned 3D glasses, it'll kind of pop out at you a little bit. One more little spot right here. We'll grab my tweezers and boom. There he goes. So that is how to apply a underglaze stencil using a Cricut Cut vinyl. Boom, there we go. There's my anaglyph. There is Bob's big boy serving up some uh, atomic destruction. And here's the rest of the cup. All of it is underglazed, different types of transfers. All ready for, to be looked at. All right, thanks for stopping by. Go make something.